my first guest. You've seen her on Two Dope Queens. She has a podcast called Couples Therapy. Please welcome the very funny Naomi Ekparagan. Naomi, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, Moses. You're looking well. I've tried for this. You know, this is, <laughs> this is the best I've looked in a week. And I've been prepping for this. Mm-hmm. You look great. Thank you for dressing up. Well, honey, I need a reason. I need a reason. They're just clothes sitting in the drawer. They're sitting in the drawers. They haven't been touched. Have you bought any anything, like any new clothing item yet? I will tell you something. I bought three pairs of shoes, all heels, because they were on sale. And I know I have nowhere to go, but I said, you cannot pass by a deal. You can't. Yeah, I've, I've bought, I've, I've done two two pairs of shoes. Tennis shoes have not been out yet. And now I don't want to take them out. Too much time has passed. Mm-hmm. Or I'm like, I can't. I've, they've been with me for this whole process. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is this is really weird. And I, please tell me if I'm wrong about this, but I feel like for a lot of comedians, they really need an audience. But for someone like you, at least the way you perform, I was just re-watching your Two Dope Queens set and then some of your rants you do online, it almost feels like you don't need an audience <laughs> to do your thing. You just barrel through of like, this is my idea. You're either here or not. Is that something that uh, that you feel or do you still feel like thinking like, uh, I need it every 15 seconds? I, I, I miss an audience. I miss it so much. I do feel like I need it to feel as though my rant has done anything for anyone but myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes it's like, right. Who was that for? You self-indulgent fool. But if you have laughter, it's like, wow, I've helped people. I've connected. Right. I think that's always kind of helped me. I think that, you know, this idea that, because I think part of why I started out being a little conversational and not too structured, I think it initially started out out of being afraid I wouldn't get the laugh. You know how like, you know how sometimes in comics, you know, they have that cadence because they know that laugh is supposed to come here. And I could never be sure. So I sort of never really gave myself those pauses or that sense of this is the one spot you're all supposed to crack up at. Oh, I know exactly what you're saying. Cause when you, cause as a comedian, you're watching that pause and you you feel when it doesn't go well. And someone's like, and that was the whole watermelon. <laughs> so anyway, but you guys that like that, just, oh. The whole watermelon, you know, you say it again, hoping you yeah. can kind of set it up. And the extent to which, you know, sometimes you might want that laugh to propel you forward. And if you're not like, I'm gonna propel myself. Is there any colloquialisms that you have a pet peeve with? Like mine, just for example, is just like, uh, what else? What do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> What do you mean, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? You're the one with the the lights on you. You know what I've never liked, even though like, I wouldn't think about it, only because you've asked, I realized, I never like, for some reason, I'll leave you with this. There's something Uh like about like, I'll leave you with this. It's like when you get the light and you know you're about to wrap up, it's there's, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about the phrase, I'll leave you with this, that feels a little too, thank you, sir. Well, all right, master. You yeah, I think it's a way of it's a way of letting the host know that I know the light has happened. Yes. And this is going to be longer than 30 seconds. Right. Right. Is what that means. <laughs> I am going to run the light. So I'll leave you with this. So growing up, it wasn't always easy. I start my full one man show there. <laughs> so you've had the, the podcast to really keep you busy. But you, the, the complicated thing is you do it with your husband. Well, well, well. So it is like a work relationship. Okay. Has that been beneficial for you guys? Or have you noticed that like just couple fights kind of bleed into what would essentially be a work fight? Well, here's the thing. I think we're, if you are living with your partner in the pandemic, you are probably struggling with distance, wanting some of it, okay? Getting a break, okay? Moses, I've always said before pandemic, I said the key to a relationship, you gotta miss a bitch. Okay, you got to have some time where you ain't seeing that person's face, Moses, if you want love to work. Yeah. And so here we are in the pandemic. It's an apartment, honey. It's an apartment. He, you know, I will sneeze in the living room. He'll say, bless you from the office. And I don't like it. I don't like it. That Moses. is no privacy. No, I've, I don't. Uh, we're, I'm also quarantined with my partner and it's a 
one bedroom. I mean, it's shutters is what <laughs> covers the bedroom. There's just nothing. You know, yeah. I, I hear like mouth sounds in the next room. <laughs> I hear someone's mouth working. I know it's too much. And so then when like, so then we go to do the pod and I find that the hardest thing is just having something to talk about. You know, like I know yeah. some people who have started podcasts in the pandemic and I'm like, there's literally less to say than ever. Yeah. You know, like, I'm like, what, what's the new episode? What we do? We walk to the couch. I don't have anything to bring to this podcast, Moses. Yeah. Well, it does feel like even the small shows I've been doing in backyards, it does feel like everyone's talking about the same thing because everyone is home. Mm -hmm. Everyone has the same stir crazy and then the same news cycle. So it's really hard to be like, I accidentally bumped into this person on the bus. There's no personal takes anymore. Right. I find I've been going to the past, if that makes sense. Like just like thinking about stuff where I'm like, oh yeah, that childhood memory might make for a funny story or that phone call with my aunt could be something, you know what I mean? Stuff that I would have never yeah. brought up before, but I'm like, oh honey, I'm digging, I'm digging. Just kick up family drama for material, you know? Just be like, hey, remember that, that aunt that faked a heart attack? <laughs> Was that really really get into it just to generate material because it is a point where yes it is hard to have a new experience that is original and then two the turnaround of material have you done any any outside live no i COVID haven't been out shows? i haven't been out how's it been it's been uh awful everything that would have been a hell gig <laughs> last year that you'd be like absolutely not um i'd rather eat a gun is now like, hey, thank you so much for having me on that show. Would love to come back in two weeks. So every like outdoor performing for cars, performing for clap machines, right. uh, the worst case scenario is just a small taste of what it used to be. So mm -hmm. then that makes it the best show. Right. Um, right and then right. material, more to your question, is like the material needs to turn over even faster now. Right. Because so much right. has happened. If you do something about GameStop, you'd be like, wow she's dusty <laughs> and that was like two hours ago that happened right right did you buy any stock uh no Me i don't either. know anything about it and yeah. i also am aware that it's not interesting to say i don't know anything about this <laughs> that's like the guys are like sport sport sports it's like yeah i just i respect it i don't get it i tried to learn about it early in choir because especially because i was like you know what if we all about to die, I need some bunker money. And I felt yeah. like these old white men, they got bunker money. And I said, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. And then your girl bought some Moderna stock and sold it immediately before it became it's before it became money. So I don't know what I'm doing, Moses. What I'm telling you is I don't you know what I'm after, doing. After no, vaccine before. you bought? No, before. I bought it when before it was low, baby. Money. When it was low, baby. Oh. Low. And no, no profit? Because I didn't understand that you're supposed to hold on to these things for a long time. <laughs> I didn't know until you said that you didn't know that you should hold on to it. And I was like, well, it's not moving. No one seems to be, it's not moving. So I guess I'll just give this back. And I thought you almost just like traded it. Do you know what I mean? Like I pretty much yeah. just like was like, okay, I gave you this. Now give me that money back. And it's like, that's not what just happened, girl. You just sold stocks. I just thought I was getting my money back. <laughs> at, at the height, at the height of their success. Yeah, I thought I was getting a refund. I have enough to like worry about with social media and try to post to like then worry about my Robin Hood app. I feel like you've kept on track though, because these things is you could easily find distractions that would take you away from the larger goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you want to be a performer. You want to be a writer, a performer. And I think the podcast is allowing you to do that. You're still getting your voice out there. Your girl's doing Instagram videos. I just need to know that someone's seeing me. Yeah, accurate, incredibly <laughs> accurate. Your Trader Joe's rat went pretty well online. I connected with that. Did you connect with that I mean, content? Do you go to TJ's? Yeah, well, we go very rarely. We have an exactly. immune compromised person with us, mm -hmm. her mom. So it is, I go in a full gray hazmat suit, mm -hmm. a gas mm -hmm. mask. So mm -hmm. I get people like taking photos of me, like <laughs> liberal cut. Uh, <laughs> But exactly what you said, you have, I mean, people should look it up. I mean, you have a whole game plan to go yeah. in there. Yeah. I think it got me as you, you were talking about how people were smelling fruit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like they're taking yeah. off their masks yeah. to be like, is this good? Is this I mean, lemon? Good? Like Moses, it's a pandemic in and out. You ain't Ina Garten. Yeah. You ain't Ina Garten. They up in here trying to get the ripest. It's like, Henny, this is survival. Also, it's Trader Joe's. You're no culinary expert, okay? We're all in TJ's because the price is right. So if you could just back up on that whole thing, because I will tell you the last time I went, because I go to Trader Joe's now every six to eight weeks, you know, uh, me and my betrothed, we each take a cart, honey. So you got two carts piled (laughs) high by the end. But I went in, I have asthma and um, I was allowed to go during senior hours, honey. So I was there. Oh. It opens at eight. I was there at eight fifteen. Whoo! That was beautiful. That was beautiful. I'm telling you, it was just us and like eleven old people. But this is what I'll tell you. Again, at eight fifteen a.m., already out of cornflakes. Come on, come on, come on. Already come on. out. Who's buying the cornflakes? These seniors, it's the one food they can enjoy. Are you getting looks from the other seniors? Cause you look young and healthy. Well, as soon as, as soon as we walked up and it was funny cause I called in advance, you know, cause that's like my, one of my uh, nightmares, this idea of like being yeah. turned away or being in front of people and then being like, like get out of here, loser. <laughs> like, so, yeah. so I called in advance and it was literally like some guy named Mikey. And I explained, he was like, he's like, yeah, you can come. And I was like, are you sure? What, what, what do I say if someone, and he goes, say I said you could come. So literally I walk up before I even get in there, the bouncer at the door was like, this is senior hours. And I was like, Mikey said I could come. I have asthma and I need, and she, was like, she was like, okay, okay, go ahead. You have a guy, you have a Trader Joe's guy now? Mikey, you gotta say his name, honey. What have our lives become? You used to be like a club. I know this guy, now you have a Trader Joe's guy. It helps you get cornflakes because it's easy on your stomach. Exactly. I wish we had more time to talk. We have a couple more guests, but this was honestly very enjoyable to talk to you. It was so wonderful just to see another human being. Gorgeous. The podcast is called Couples Therapy. I highly recommend it. I was just listening to it just in preparation for this and then uh, really thoroughly enjoyed the show. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And then there's rants online. So (laughs) Naomi at Paragon. Thanks, guys.